Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 142. And for the first time, I think since about episode 100, uh, or maybe 120, we did um, two, it was like something like... T- um, two lads one part <laughs> ages ago but yeah for the first time we're, we're guestless so uh this is going to be slotting in just in in the middle of the northern irish tour so we've uh, so far we've had the podcasts from jeremy mcwilliams uh, jonathan ray and the one that's going out today although it'll be like last week when you listen to the this, burrows one yeah the burrows one and then we're going to slot this one in and we've got two more uh sort of northern irish tour ones to get in which um that's what I, was, I was about to blurt out what that is so we can't it's uh, we're, we're playing with the time paradox again yeah, Chrissy, yeah. aren't we? That's both, a problem. Both very much roads, roads men, predominantly. Yes. Although, to be fair, both of them did uh, very well on the short circuits as well. So a bit of a crossover, but uh, they were both like cracking podcasts. Um, so I've listened back to one of them and it was class. And the next one I'm really looking forward to is also, uh, yeah, you've got some good pods looking forward to. But yeah, um, we just thought we would sort of catch up with everyone really because it's a while since we've just sat down and had a big crack. And I feel like I'm about to interview you. Normally, <laughs> you normally are sitting there and you're all sitting over there. It's a bit. This is a bit. It's too old school, Chrissy. I don't. Oh, no. I, it's it, it's it's uncomfortable to be fair. So oh, it's no. uncomfortable, young. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've we've both. Um, well, by the time this podcast comes out. I'm hoping if everything goes to plan that my um, podcast, my announcement should be out pr- uh, probably on Friday. So a few days right. ago. So obviously I th- fresh to talk about it on the podcast. And also you've got a, a big announcement to make about your, which is a, I don't think it will have been announced anywhere officially by the time this podcast goes out. So it's Oh like, God, no, no, no. I've, I've got a lot to organise. Never mind putting things out on FaceTube and all that stuff. But uh, I'll tell you what, even before you go down the big news element, let's talk about what the, what the hell have we been up to, Chrissy? There's been a lot on the plane, aren't they? I know. We're you, just you, saying... ha- you have got a list. And about, this is proper old school and I'm looking at this list going, ah, I'm going to end up fucking this up so probably <laughs> somehow. So, right, crack on, son. You go with the list. Go with the list. So the, I think this is the longest gap that we've had. We're in Northern Ireland about three weeks ago, I would say. Never. Three weeks, four weeks, something like that. But um, this is pretty <laughs> much the longest, list. <laughs> yeah, the longest gap that me and Dom haven't done a podcast for. Uh, in that time, just being flat out, obviously, um, we'll get on to all the suit bag stuff, but there's so much to sort of organise and so whenever I've got a spare minute I've been doing that and I've with my other sort of part-time jobs uh, just been flat out really and um this week this weekend that so we've record we're recording this on a Sunday night so yesterday Saturday we had our first uh patron flat track day what a laugh that was mine and uh, down at the Champions Flat Track Schools, um, if any YouTube uh, watchers here have got the Pete Boast hoodie on, which thanks very much to Pete and Jackie as, for that. I was about to say, if Pete and Jackie are watching this, they'll be thinking, why am I not wearing mine? I don't want to look like a dodgy married couple, <laughs> you know, just walking around wearing the same clothes, Christy, so we're going to have to stick with this. So, Pete, if you listen to this, I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll be wearing it down to London, uh, which is... Hold on, is that... Back to the time paradox here, Chrissy. Mexican so is that die. that's this weekend? So this would have been out after blah blah blah. Anyway, yeah. I'm messing up the list here, Chrissy. I'm messing up the list. But yeah, the um, flat track day. If, um, it was basically we we originally put it out to the patrons, and the idea we had like 21 spaces. And the idea was if it didn't fill up, then we could sort of offer it to um, the the jet like people just on Instagram, YouTube, that type of thing. But uh, it actually got sold out straight away. And um, basically the format of the day was a flat track fun day. So we did some basic sort of drills in the morning. There was a wide variety of um, sort of experience from people who've done flat track. We've had speedway riders, road race riders, Tom, all kind of motocross riders, the lot, full age of rangers. So um, we in the morning we did some sort of basic drills and sort of shown flat track style. And then we did, it, the afternoon was brilliant, so uh, free practice one, free practice two. Then we did a, a super pole session, which was four laps by yourself, which did sort of qualify. And, and then we got teamed up in groups of five and did a, an hour endurance race with pit stops and everything. Uh, but yeah, it was such a great day. And um, obviously it was... It's funny with the patrons. It's very much like an online community where we do sort of... It's uh, borderline a cult, Chrissy. <laughs> so, let's let's yeah. face it. Like we do kind of Zoom <laughs> quizzes and catch-ups. And well, you feel like you you know these people because you sort of get messages all the time and speaking to, you know, they're asking good questions to the guests every week. But it's really nice to put a, a face to the name. And uh, it Were was... You, uh, look, I'm going to be honest. Were you spooked at any time? 
like you know people were telling you stuff from episode like 92 and you're like how do you know that you like you're speaking of essentially a stranger and it, it was it was surreal because you're, you're like they know almost everything that you're going through and you're like i just sat there like that, <laughs> going, looking at these like going like that going i'm gonna have to start being more careful but uh let's face it i'm never gonna be careful what i say <laughs> but no like like you say it was absolutely cracking day and uh, mind you peter's the the color drained out of his face when we all started get going didn't we there was just that many that many varieties of like skill level it was just chaos we're and just trying to kill each other please to say as well there was no injury although every, i think everyone had an ache and left leg by the end of the day how is your no how is your leg just the usual like ache in the Ma- groin a like. usual it might mate I, I could i couldn't lift my leg it was absolutely killing us man mm. it was great crack it's like like the steel shoe my god i i, I, I i'm still limping just because I think the weight's on me foot, I look like I've got a club foot. I have a Hexham like, so it's, you know, it does blend in with the atmosphere. <laughs> uh, and um, yes, yeah, oh, at lunchtime as well, we've got to give a special shout out to Sam Ward. Uh, basically, we everyone that was there got a chance to do the the Colchester Kawasaki Grip Strength Challenge, and um, that that the that, winner. Go on. Uh, no, I was about to say because we literally had everyone in the room, and the, everyone there was competitive. There wasn't a single person that wasn't competitive, and everyone just shut up. And it was just like. It was like an extermination of mass mass crazy one and everyone just queued up and had a go at this and we were reading out their scores. And, and also there was um, the Jonathan Ray signed Chasing the Racing Cap up yes. for grabs. So obviously everyone wanted to win it. And uh, so it wasn't just the pride of being the, the highest score. It was also for the cap. And um, yeah, I've got to give a massive shout out to Sam Moore who absolutely smashed every, every single person that was there and also our full all-time uh, list. So up until that point, uh, Jonathan Ray was the highest with 13 Point six, and um, <laughs> Sam got fifteen. But no, bear, bear in mind, everyone will be thinking, "How has he done that?" No, he, he banged out fifteen, no problem whatsoever, twice over. Mm-hmm. And uh, as Dom alluded to just before, myself <laughs> and Dom are down at uh, the XL London show. By the time this podcast goes out, it's it's the end of the, that weekend, but uh, it's the the sort of biggest bike show in London down at the XL. Just uh, um, like it's in the sort of east part uh, in sort of near Canary Wharf, I think. And uh, we're, we're down there on the flat track bikes. There's I think about eight of us racing the there's like a course in the right in the middle of the show with like grandstands and the lot it's really really good obviously you did it last year and i came down to watch and uh, we're also taking the chase and the racing trailer down there as well so it'll be great chance to sort of meet some some of our listeners and maybe introduce the podcast to people that have never seen it before and uh yeah we've got a, we're taking that strength game down and uh, people can come in get pictures that type of thing so really really looking forward to that I couldn't agree more, and it's going to be... Uh, like, last time I was down there, right, um, they already pre-picked the teams. So I'm kind of panicking now. This is going to be like a flashback to middle school for me because I never got picked for football, <laughs> ever. So you got John, you got John McGuinness and Peter Hickman, and they're going to they're gonna pick everyone else first, and then I'm just going to be left on the bench. I, I can... It's going to be emotional, this one. But... So get, um, <laughs> the, the riders are... So there's me and you, John McGuinness, Peter Hickman, Danny Webb, Charlie, Charlie Nesbitt, Nesbitt, Tom and Tim Neve. Well, so Tom and Tim Neve are built for this sport. They've done, They'll like, dominate they're, everyone. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, like, we're going to have to take a front wheel off the pair of them. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I was absolutely crying laughing. Did you see that, you know, MCN released the newspaper? They got the wrong way around. They got the wrong way around. So there's Tim Neve saying he's won the National Superstock Championship. I <laughs> Oh, God, I can imagine with their dry sense of humour. That was a good one in the Neve household. Mm. But um, no... It's uh, who are, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Danny Webb, he's doing a fair bit of flat track. There's there's no mugs there. Hickman goes over to uh, Cali- well, California. He does that Texas tornado camp. Yeah, he's not a mug. John's a serious talent on anything you put him on. So really. I'm going to be the one left in the dirt here because you, you can fly around on one of them things, t- Chrissy. A, a b- big shout out to John. Actually, put a, a he did a bit of uh, a bit of a shout out for us the other day, didn't he? With his is it his brother? Kurt? His brother Kurt. I wear him one of our chase the racing hats. Ah, it was good, <laughs> good crack that. But, he was um, having a dig at the price, but we're going to run a show here, John. We're going to run a show here. Um, but yeah, um, should we, any anything else? What, have you been up to anything else last few weeks? Just bloody storm damage, mate. I, I could sit here and whinge about tree work all day and day in day out that's actually i tell you what that, that's one thing i'm i've i've been thinking about you know uh, getting the little violin but i've just been thinking about like the future element side of things and like you know i was taking the piss a little, like a bit out of sam and being a lorry driver but i booked in for me class one because realistically with my job i've been absolutely flat stick with it and i'm thinking to myself 
really, there's not many people in my game who get past 60 or 70, like definitely, I don't know a single 70 year old woodcutter. Mm. I'm just thinking if I would like make a right mess of myself this year and I touch wood for the love of God, but I think I, it's something I was thinking of the other day. It's like people don't really think of that element of it. You, you can't, you know, you, you wouldn't go racing bikes if you thought you were going to get injured. But actually, if I do knock myself and going back to work, it, it'll take a long time to be able to go like, like put a climbing harness back on and start running up and down trees like I do. I've been doing for like seven day weeks now and I'm like, Aye. Jesus wept. And obviously, you know, that's been spurred on to the news later on. It's a bit like, you know, the, the money in the pot. I'm thinking... How do if I basically I'm going to go into a lot of debt? I've never been in debt when we were racing in my life, but I'm going to end up jumping down the rabbit hole with money, and it's it's been quite scary with that because like I've been raised in the fact of like don't spend something that you don't have, and you know a lot of people like especially our age, Chrissy, people forget that, don't they? You can get everything on credit cards and ticky and booky and everything, and it's like that's why I'm driving around in bangers and using shit at like. This is the nicest hoodie I own, and I got it literally from a charity shop. You know, I'm always looking after the money, and I'm shitting myself. To be fair, mate, proper mm -hmm. shitting myself, like being like chucking, the chucking money at it, like I'm gonna. They've uh, just dropped all the requirements as well for the. You used to have to do your class two, then build up to your class one, where you can go straight in for your class one now. And I've, and uh, with there being a shortage as well, the the uh, money is very decent at the moment but yeah it's weird at the moment. obviously like elect the price of all of energy is like massively going to, the, the world's uh world's a bit of a funny place at the moment in it i tell i tell you like what like um like you say like with the covid thing it's like you, ha you don't have to do your class to, so it, it's literally half in the price but still an expensive it's two and a half grand mm -hmm. two and a half grand to put up for a, a license but thing is you've got it for life mm. you've can I can I just use this opportunity to say I would absolutely love me class one. So if there's anyone out listening that could do as a bit of a discount on a uh, on a to do my class one, a little a, a little bit of a discount, drop us an email and uh, hold on, 100 get booked on. I'm going to double that because if you're getting it, I want it as well. That's not that's not on that one. That's not on. But I've done me medical somehow. I've like they kept re drug testing this and I kept passing it and they're, they're like they're, I'm a medical marvel. They're like, look, son, there's something wrong with you. Like I'm fully aware of that. Mate, but uh... I had a weird dream last night where I was just oh, I've never done drugs and uh, I had a, a <laughs> like a real vivid dream last night that like people were taking these I don't, I don't know why I'm telling you this but people would take these pills so I, I had half of one and I was just like off man no when I do you know when you wake up in the morning you're not actually sure like honestly it was surreal like but uh, anyway a little bit of a side note um should we get on to, to the news um, yeah, might as well go for it, Chrissy. I, I could see the, the list is scratching out. I, was go I thought we were going to go do down the old Drugs Avenue Park in there. I thought, here we go. <laughs> I will, um, for anyone that obviously like follows like on social media or whatever, you'll have hopefully uh, seen in the last few days that's been announced that I'm going to be uh, doing my full debut season in the British Superbike Championship this coming year in 2022. And um, sort of a re uh, rejoining with Crow Performance on a, on a BMW and um, a very similar sort of team to when we won the Superstock Championship back in 2020 and uh, stepping up to the, the big boy class. And um, it's, yeah, obviously a huge commitment. Uh, we'll get into like the the details in a second, but um, I just just want to say it's it from being a very young lad watching on sort of BBC watching the BSB, it's been an absolute dream to get to super bikes, and um, I just feel like it's the right time in my life in terms of like I've I've not sort of settled down. I've got I've in terms of like commitments. I'm you know um, I'm not like with anybody i'm not i haven't got a mortgage that type of thing and i just feel like you've probably got a few kids kicking around that you don't know <laughs> off but it's <laughs> if, if i if i don't do it now a curly hair glass like, <laughs> hello daddy <laughs> if, if i don't um bite the bullet and do it now i just feel i'm kind of worried that i would just end up like a uh, like if i did super stock say again and then get to the end of the year and i you know i've 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 won that championship. I feel like I want to step up and test myself against the very best teams and the best riders in the in the country. And um, yeah, there was no sort of suitable uh, sort of rides available. And um, I've, I, it's been the best year I've ever had racing in 2020 for lots of reasons. But 
all the people that are involved uh, are there for the right reasons, all sort of pulling together. And it's a, f a brilliant group of people. I really believe in everyone that's there. Um, I've got a hell of a lot of faith in Phil and the whole core performance team for preparing the bikes. And it, like I say, it's a, it's a massive step. It's a complete adventure. Um, like I say, I'll go into the sort of ins and outs of how the whole thing's going to work later on in the podcast. But um, yeah, it's... A, I really, really can't wait, and um, I've been obviously to make it ha um, to make it work. You asked earlier, like what we've been up doing the last few weeks. Over the last weeks and even month or so, I've been just flat out sort of getting in contact with all of my personal sponsors and uh, approaching new sponsors, and just um, it's. You, every year I usually have like my helmet and say like three spaces on my leathers that I can kind of like sort of barter with to get sp personal sponsors where it's it's I've obviously got like a much bigger sort of canvas to to offer um and in terms of like packages and whatever you know I've got the f essentially we've got control of like the full bike the garage board and obviously leathers helmet uh, and also um my as my parents' contribution helps out this year, um, they've committed to um, buying a, either like some sort of truck or my dad's wanting to get a double-decker bus. Like a, Does he need a driver? <laughs> he will do. I. He's, I'm looking for a job. Booked, he's booked in for his class two, actually, for Is this he? reason. I Right. But, um, yeah, um, like a sort of big... I, th I think in an ideal situation, we would have a big chase in the race and red double-decker bus and um, turn, yes. it, turn it into like a hospitality unit and... Um, have a like downstairs as a, as a sort of commercial kitchen and in that way be able to offer sponsors like proper corporate hospitality at the weekends um but yeah like, like so we'll get into the ins and outs of it um and i've, I've got a few for for anybody that sort of wants to get involved whether it's um sort of small businesses medium businesses um kind of uh just individuals wanting to help out i've got loads of different sort of packages and very similar to sort of 2020 I, you know i can be very transparent with all of the costs and exactly what I need to to come up with, and um, obviously I'd just I'd be incredibly grateful for anybody that that, that can help us out. Um, but yeah, I've uh, yeah got loads of good ideas, but uh, less about me. And we'll, no, uh, no, no. I, th I think no, no. Okay, I'm, I think we should go through what you're doing at the moment because even me sitting here and there'll be people listening to this and watching this on YouTube going. Oh, ask that, ask this, and we're, we're guaranteed to miss something. You're guaranteed to miss something. Yeah. And it's it's a bit like, I think one of the simplest questions is obviously, it's it's self-explanatory. The BMW, why that bike? Is it solely because of what you've done in Stock Thousand? Or is yeah. it the team element? Would you go with another bike? Or? Yeah, it's very very much uh, linked with uh, core performance as a business. Is, um, mainly, they do other um, sort of bikes, but the the sort of experts in the BMW field. So that kind of leads us in that direction. And obviously the history of winning the Superstock Championship on that bike. I will be on a slightly, obviously, Superstock to Superbike. There's lots of different changes, but um, going... When I did the Superstock, it was on the S1000, where this one will be the M1000. And that's in getting built at the moment. Um, we're, in terms of super super bike spec um there's like a massive range of kind of what what you can what you can choose and with it being my first year in the championship uh it'll, i think we're being very realistic in terms of kind of what our ambitions and you know in terms of costs it, it can very much escalate so we're going for like a, a the sort of best with the better sort of the best value for money bike type of thing but being sort of sensible with what we choose yeah so let, let's let's go back to that ambition element of it so let, let, let's let's jump on that side of things the first thing you brought up so what what are you um, this is literally interview interview yeah, interview yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying this we'll, element we'll now. switch it around in a bit but no, uh, no, we're yeah. not, no 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 we're going down we're going down this side of it but it's a case of yeah so your ambition side of it ambition. go for it mate go yeah so it. i was just looking on the bsb website there so far there's 26 entries and there's still loads of people still to enter so i think we're going to have a grid of well into the 30s now that's a strong grid that say so there'll definitely be 30 on the grid it's always been no, no, there's usually like 20. I think if you look at most timesheets from last year, there'll be like 23, 24 ish. Something really? Like that. Yeah. So it, there's loads extra people in suit bikes that come this year coming. Right. Um, in terms of realistic targets, I think f at the start, with it being completely like a new venture for myself and the team, I think if we can start by 
sort of finishing races, getting some experience. And if I can get some points, get a, you know, top 15 right in the middle of the field, obviously every race, there's going to be a few people that have mechanicals, few crashes. And then if you can beat like a good 10 riders, you'll be sort of nicking some points. And I think if we can start the season around that sort of area, around the sort of 15th mark, um, I think that'll be a real good start. And then it'll just be a case of getting used to the bike. There's lots of upgrades that we can if um, sort of the finances allow and depending on where where we are, there's lots of sort of upgrades that we can go for. And yeah, I think just just realistically, if I can sort of be beating some of the some of the established sort of, if you like, um, full time super bike riders as a privateer, I think that'll be absolutely incredible. And um, it's funny. I, I mean, I have been in BSB before. I did a few uh, one-off races um, back in 2018, yeah, 2018, so years ago. I, I remember back then I had such a limited understanding of, of the bike, how it worked, settings, uh, suspension, the chassis. I remember sitting in sort of debriefs and the, they would turn around like full team and like, right, uh, and asking us questions. And I'm just thinking, well, it was, I'd literally had no testing on the bike. I'd never been on slicks. I'd never been on a super bike. And I'd, I'd go out and free practice and then trying to like sort of set a bike up from there. It was, I, I just had no clue. And back then I never, I never actually finished out of the points. I either got points or crashed. Um, it was, but yeah, I was like, I got like a 10th, 11th, 12th. So I think, but hold on, even looking through them timesheets, then you were like beating McKenzie, like the current champ, weren't you? Is that correct? Uh, like, I, well, come if, on, if, blow your yeah, own a little bit here. Come on, even then. Some, yeah, some decent riders. If, yeah. You, obviously, the timesheets are there for people to see. But yeah, so <laughs> go have a look. I think, yeah, if I think being realistic, um, if I can kind of qualify, you know, in, inside the top 20 yeah. and be be nicking points early on in the season, I think that'll be that'll be great. So talking about, you know, when you when you had that super bike ride, you yeah. know, with them, we're talking about the whole, whole <laughs> give me that team name. Halsall is a Halsall. 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 Was that like a top end bike? On Halsall, uh, it was a it no, was no. A like strong, as far as Suzuki are concerned, what they could turn out. Yeah, it, it was decent. Um, back yeah. back then, it was when Bradley Ray and Richard Cooper were on the build base bikes, and actually that year, I've I've um, I think I beat. I was I definitely beaten Gino, who was on the OMG bike at the time. Beat him most most of the races that I finished, if not all of them. And I I was consistently. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure I beat Brad a, a good few times as well. Yeah, and Richard. So um, no, I don't think it, it wasn't like the 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 best bike on the grid, but it was very well put together. Excellent team. Uh, some really sort of experienced people in the team, and I I did learn a lot in the few rounds that I did. But like I said, I never did any testing. Uh, and it was very much just like d dip my dip my toes in. Yeah, in, I would say. Oh no, because it's interesting. Because like what I would say, like um, that Suzuki would have been one of the best. Like as far as upgrades that like you were like talking about beforehand, you know that that Suzuki would have had all of them. So you were briefly discussing with me before we started this episode. Is like let, let's talk about the fork options. And like you're going down the front end forks of like the four, like how much are the forks? You tell me, tell the listeners. Yeah. And um, this is the comparison in bikes. You yeah, know what I mean? A, that's a, there's one, the one thing where I don't know in detail about the, the budget is the bike to be fair, but I do, I am aware that there's, the, there's lots of options and right. we've kind of picked, we've uh, strategically picked ones that we think are good value for money and kind of, so it, just in general, in in super bikes, you can go for forks that are like sort of around the sort of four or 5,000 pound. And then you can get ones that are like 10, 11,000. And you know, it's, it, You've got to be really confident that they're, they're going to be much better. So, the, and same with like engine specs, and you can always, I mean, you can always upgrade things, but it's it's that thing of um, like the law of diminishing returns, and yeah, you've kind of got to be realistic. So, obviously, in terms of the the budget to build the bike, um, you can you can get carried away in super bikes. So, yeah, I, I'm confident my bike will be you know strong oh strong god package. it'll be definitely a strong bike but like let's talk like you were talking about we're always going to compare it against the r1 or the the jacati army you know like them being the best bikes and the best teams and stuff like that but being a privateer it's just that it's it's always that one thing isn't it budget 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 and that's the one thing you're desperately going against and like you were talking about with your ambitions they are like 
very realistic, very mm. realistic. And the thing is, you've never been one of those riders that have gone, I'm going to be in the top three, top five. You will always deliver on the day. You're, you're a quietly confident lad. So you're saying top 15, I'm, I'm top 10. I'm, I'm just going to actually blow your horn for you soon. That sounded so worse <laughs> than the show go out there. But no, it's a case of you've definitely you've definitely got it to get it going, haven't you? But it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you, to be fair, you never know. And if you pick any sort of race from superbikes and you look at... Um, it's very difficult to... Like pretty much everyone in superbikes is beating each other. So, mm. you know, it's, it's very... You, you kind of just say, oh, I've beaten him before. So therefore, I'm going to finish here. Yeah, it you've got to be, like yeah, you've got to be realistic. But at the end of the day, there's nobody, you know, there's nobody on in that field which is um, kind of uh, untouchable in terms of like. Um, obviously, there's, there's some incredibly uh, top class by graces. The the level is unbelievably high, and obviously, I think by now there'll there'll have been a few more announcements. So you know, it's like it is a the best uh, domestic series in the in the world. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've, a lot of the established top top riders I've I've battled with, you know, numerous times, and and uh, I don't think there's any reason once we get you know set up that we can't be reasonably competitive. So yeah, it's it's pointless. It's it's pointless. Like saying I'm going to do that. We're talking about this earlier. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, if we turn up the first round and we're t you know twenty fifth, who you know it's it's a starting point at the end of the day in in the long sort of in long term um, I would much rather f be finishing 25th than actually finishing in game and then building on that yes. so it doesn't matter re really where we are at round one as long as we start building and get f more competitive as the year goes on and um, yeah I'm going to have some really great people around um, we've got some in, in terms of the sponsorship options we've got loads of uh, great packages a lot of the Superbike uh, teams are obviously set up, and there's lots of um, massive costs involved. And in, you know, it's professional people are working full time on wages and whatever, and the costs, you know, are huge. Uh, in terms of our team, it's very much similar in Superstock. You know, lots of sort of volunteers and everyone sort of pulling together really. Um, and because we don't have a, a title sponsor um, as such. It's basically like an accumulation of personal sponsors. Yes. So I've just rang all my personal sponsors and, you know, I can give them a lot more being in super bikes, a lot more brand and bike. Uh, television time, time, everything, yeah. All that sort of stuff. And so I've just sort of asked if, if, any, if any of them can to, to um, you know, put a bit more in, which yeah, a lot of them we... kindly have. And uh, also... I've, um, Managed to get some new sponsors on board, which will be announced uh, like on my social medias over the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, sort of working hard. We've still got loads of like areas where people can sort of um, like uh, sort of product sponsors and whatever that we need to sort out. And we're busy working on that at the moment. But we also um, I've got pack packages pretty much all the way through. So like the, I've got some sponsors that put you know around the sort of one thousand, and we've got some like brand and cool options with hospitality for around that sort of money, and then also building up to like sort of five grand and te sort of ten grand sort of packages, um, which obviously comes with a lot, a hell of a lot for ten grand. So um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, we've sort of put yeah. Just basically put my heart and soul into it, and um, whatever happens at the end of the season, sort of look back and uh, I'm I'm definitely not going to get to an age and think I wish I'd done that. I'm I'm kind of putting my balls on the line a little bit and maybe sort of biting off a little bit more than I can chew. But you you've just got to give it a go sometimes, haven't you? And every, do you know what? I've spoke to so many people like that I really respect who have got the say their own businesses or they've done in different walks of life, and I've kind of you know, over the last few months kind of been toying with the idea and all of the, there's been so many people that I've sort of talked about it and they've just said, just do it. They can tell straight away, like the passion and um, lots of, yeah, like I said, a few of my real close personal sponsors that um, when they were sort of around my sort of age, left good jobs and set up their own businesses and everyone around them was saying, don't do this, you know, don't, you'll, you'll, you'll fail, you do this. And they've, they've sort of, and they were saying the same thing to me. So yeah, I, I'm under no illusions, you know, it's, it's a huge amount of money that we need to raise and all of the effort and everything pulled together. But there's, there's lots of people out there doing it and I'm just things in, in, in life in general, I've got very much of the attitude of if, if someone else can do it, I can do it. So kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going 
going to be a, a huge adventure. And um, I will just mention as well, uh, I was saying about the sort of sponsorship opportunities and for like the packages. I've all, I've, I'm have i also going to, um, it's not an original idea. You do something similar and I know a lot of people, other people do something similar, but I am going to be starting some sort of fans. <laughs> so, a supporters <laughs> club. And uh, I came up, um, it's quite unique that the rider has con- has control over more than just, like I said, the, the helmet. And I, was about, I was about to say, because the one thing that people have got to get clear is that you, you, you are not paying for a ride. You and Crow Performance, Gabriel, Phil, Crow, all your spot. You're building a team together. Yeah, that is the different element of this. It's very much like joining join forces, and of course um, it is. And you've corporate, got corporate performance of uh, uh, you know building and providing a, a, a bike and putting a hell of a lot of time and effort into the, the all the workshop stuff. Bill, you know, in terms of hours throughout the year, it's like a huge commitment from corporate performance, and none of this could happen without them. Yeah, and people involved, and. Um, now, obviously, I'm looking after uh, the the running costs and financing the running costs, which obviously are huge. And I've I've never raised any sort any um anything like that sort of money, but uh, very much the attitude of let's just give it a go and see. You know, I'm I'm I know we'll manage it somehow, um, and we've got obviously like a proper proper plan in place, uh, and um yeah, so. It, sorry, I was just I was just going to say for uh, individuals yes. who wanted to sort of help us out, I'm going to set up a, a supporters club, and I was just um, it's unusual that the rider has control over or some control over sort of the the branding and like garage boarding for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I am going to set aside when I when I design all the the garage boarding and what it looks like. Who's doing when, your garage board for you? When that's one of the things I need to sort out in terms of buying this. But uh, right, I'm gonna, that's another thing. I'll get in touch. Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna set one of the boards aside to do like a sort of a, a bit of a fan wall type of thing, like a supporters club. And um, like I said, it's not an original idea, but I'm gonna give up p- the people the opportunity to send in uh, pictures of either them or the kids or whatever and um, have like five centimetre by five centimetre squares. So it'll be on, in the garage for the full BSB season and um, set up like a... F- so if people buy a square, there can be in a Facebook group and then there'll be sort of giveaways and like very much like live streams and stuff, very much helping us out. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I'll be doing um, a square for like 150 quid and be in the sports club. I know that's a, a lot of money for an individual, but um, obviously it's I've got a hell of a lot of money to raise. And for anyone that is in the position to help us out, um, if you just like either send us a message or emails or whatever, and we'll I'll get that set up. I was also going to do a, so if we're doing little squares, I was going to do a three by three square. So it would be like a 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter square. So like a big one, which would be like really noticeable on TV. Um and do maybe do that for like a, if each square is 150, like do that for like a, a thousand pound. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it's a massive amount of money, but um, I think it'd be really cool to like see your face on on the TV and stuff and be in the garage. Uh, so yeah, I've got loads of little packages like that for people to help out as individuals, and then as businesses from like from as little as one thousand up to um, obviously. There's no, there's no upper limit, but you know, like big packages. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, with the the hospitality, we'll have a proper bus, a proper, real good quality hospitality. It'll be great. I've got some good ideas about how to set that up. Do you know um, how many people will be praying for this double decker bus? Plan oh, it's happening. Now? It's happening. My da- my dad's it's, committed to it. That's so. actually fully committed now. Yeah, hundred percent. That is absolutely brilliant. A double decker bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and bear in mind, Karen, while cars, she can can't half cook. So like, they're dedicating all their time to doing that as well. Yeah, and in terms of the the, to be fair, I've had a few people messages already say asking about um sort of jobs and wanting to like help out and volunteer. Brilliant. I'm gonna have lots of sort of uh, jobs that uh, I'm gonna need a hand with. So again, if anyone's listening that maybe not in a financial position to to contribute, but maybe has the time, um, that's obviously a massive hand and we are gonna need people to help out with like the in the garage and also um hospitality and looking after things. So I've got you know a hell of a lot to organise and um yeah. It's uh, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment, but yeah, really, really looking forward. I've got in terms of like product sponsors as well. There's obviously various things I need, but um, for anyone that is interested in helping, just get in touch. I'll tell you what, like going down the technical element, you're you're really restricted with this bike. 
as far as testing, aren't you? How many yeah, times so, you how many times are you actually going to be out on that thing before you go racing? So just be doing the BSB tests. That's what I'm saying. Like the beginning of the season, you know, there's there's really like I'm not putting myself under any pressure whatsoever. First few rounds, you know, just uh, get bedded in. Mm. But um, yeah, in, t- in terms of testing, I won't be doing any Spanish testing or like European testing, and um, I'm. At the moment, I'm not planning on doing anything else but the BSB test. We might. I'm not even sure with with the rules if you're allowed to do anything else other than the BSB test. But that doesn't particularly worry us. A lot of the time when I've been to Spain, um, you know, you, you're flying out there in the sunshine things and then you come back to like a wet and cold wind, England. <laughs> England, yeah. And it's very, you know, it's happened a few times where people have dominated Spanish testing and then not been able to replicate. And vice versa, there's been times where I remember one year Taz got the bikes really late and Eden and Farmer, the first, pretty much the first time they rode them was at round one and uh, they, man- you know, managed fine. So, yeah, it's, it's one of them things I'm... You know, I'm going up against the best riders and the best teams. So uh, just kind of realistic about it. Bloody hell, fair play, mate. Fair, it, it's terrifying even just sitting across from you because like the stress levels that you're going to go through, it, it's unreal. <laughs> but like you say, you're in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. That's it, yeah. And I, I will be doing, um, I'm going to start a, a thing on um, all my, across my social media for uh, sponsor Spotlight Sundays. So every Sunday I'll be uh, sort of doing a Spotlight feature on on one of my sponsors. And uh, that'll be a great chance for like people um, who are helping us out be able to sort of explain what they do as a business and that type of thing but um, yeah we've had uh, Alan Towles back back involved massively Brilliant. involved with the team and he's been a huge help in terms of sorting things out and sourcing things good lad uh, he's work- I'm always on the phone he's working his socks off to try and help us make it happen and obviously all the crew performance like Gabriel um, I've got a, f- a very close friend of mine Ian Stanton who's been working his socks off behind the scenes as well as so many other people that are you know try- trying to pull all the strings together so yeah, it's um, actually it's a, a massive adventure, and uh, I, I, yeah, I have probably bitten off a lot more than you know a massive amount, but I'm so excited about it. Anything? Okay, and uh, this is massively putting you on the spot, but now that you've released news on the show, is there anything like sitting here right now that you need direct help with? Like you know, is it getting an awning? Is it getting like anything daft like that that you think I need to get that done yeah there's, there's loads of things that we need to to buy in terms of like even just like in terms of the garage there's there's loads of super bike specific things like um the the tire rack that you need like sort of 10 wheels on on things right uh, 10 or five five or six sets of tire warmers um there's there's lots of costs like and you have on. to get you have to get all the tire warmers you have to get the tire racks and stuff like everything. yeah yeah right. okay all the garage out obviously the garage board and um i'm gonna i've got a few people that i need to speak to but i would like i'm gonna uh, try and either purchase or um hire or get a sponsored um i'm looking at like luton vans with the the tail down so mm-hmm. not uh, we're not going for like an Arctic lorry type of thing. It'll be like a modest Luton van uh, for all the garage equipment. Again, any of the things I'm mentioning, if anyone can help, obviously get in touch <laughs> and uh, or even put us in, the, uh, in touch with people to get a deal or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, obviously in terms of the hospitality, we wouldn't need to get a big one and put on the on the uh, bus and a, a commercial kitchen. Even yeah. to, I think my dad's got his eye on a few buses, but would, would you need a purchase a double-decker bus? Anyone for that? Uh, there's so many things. There's so many ways people can help out. Uh, so, and even as much as just like sharing Cause, things. Because a lot of people, in my experience, you know, it's, I've always personally found it really, really hard to go up to someone and go, look, you know, this is my race and I need to get sponsorship in for that. And what I've found easier and what people like tend to prefer is like buying something for you. In my experience, so it's like a bit like a tire rack. I don't, I wouldn't even know how much a tire rack is. I've got two arms, I carry my tires like that. Mm-hmm. But how much would a tire rack be? At a guess, off the top of your head, without property price, what would it be? A few but the quid. aluminium, there'd be a fair few quid. So yeah. even like, let's call it a thousand pounds, because you know, with electronic plugs and everything like that, you know, if there's anyone out there that wants to buy Chrissy a tire rack, oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's loads, there was of lo- and... loads of things like that, you know what I mean? There's, there's lots of companies I need to still get in, in touch with in terms of and see what sort of prices they can do things for. But yeah, yes. I've, I've got everything. Well, any again, aluminium welders out there, yeah, they okay. could bang one up, that would be awesome. Okay. Do you know, uh, can you remember, we had a podcast called The Spreadsheet from 2020. Oh. Ex- <laughs> we've got exactly the same, but it's, it's a right. much more in detail spreadsheet. And uh, yeah, it's obviously, it, that, that's got pretty much everything on. And um, yeah, just kind of working our way through and sort of tick, ticking things off. Obviously, tire tire bill's huge for superbikes. Um, I can't remember if it's like nine. I think it's eleven rears and nine, 
nine front something like that but yeah it's, it's huge um and yeah it just kind of working our way through but like i say i'll i don't want to go through each each and every sponsor that's come on board in this podcast but if you check out my socials over the next few months i'll be putting things on uh also i've i won't announce it now but i am changing i'm staying the same leathers but i am changing helmets so that i'll be putting a, a post out on that i was about to blurt that out i'm glad you said that <laughs> like, oh, okay. well yeah i've got a, a few uh things but anyway that's um <laughs> Of, yeah, but th- thanks very much for listening to me ramble on. And uh, I'm looking for, <laughs> I, I tell you what, I will just say one last thing. I would love to, I know it's quite common at the moment, but I would absolutely love to put some sort of um, sort of YouTube series um, t- to sort of maybe like a round by round thing, not like a weekly thing, maybe just like have like a YouTube thing of all the behind the scenes stuff Mint for, idea. Each, for the for the 11 rounds and the testing. And um, again, in an ideal situation, I've you know I've got like for example Dave, who's who made the film. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'd absolutely love to turn around and sort of be able to finance a full you know professional thing. But, yeah. Um, I've obviously got to be real like realistic with the budget, and but yeah, if it, anyone can help with anything along those lines, yeah. Um, there's uh, well, literally that, if, in terms in terms of like staff, if you like, for a race weekend, there's it's a huge huge um operation. So I. I I am going to need a lot of help, um, but yeah, I'd, I know a lot of lovely people, and I hope <laughs> that a few of them might might want to help out. Yeah, definitely, mate. I tell you what, though, if there's that would be prop, that would be good, that isn't it? You know, if someone could get on and do like help out with the vlog and do the film and everything like that for you. That would be really good, mm-hmm. really. Like, like you say, it's you know people have done that before, but then you think they've got a massive purse string behind it. So it's a little bit different. So, if so, if so like, I, I'm going to put the plead out for you. So, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping someone out there, there'll be, you know, if someone's in college or in training or anything like that, like, this is a really good story to follow, I think, anyway. So, but... I've, I've got Lundy on the job helping us out with uh, sourcing a few things as well. So, he's working as good. well. As good. Well. But, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's kind of enough about my news. And, You've been in a real similar sort of position over the last few months yeah, where, really. <laughs> over, over the last few months where we've been kind of discussing, um, you know, you, you've, you're very much sorted with your smaller bikes yeah. and you've been looking around for the last few months and sort of seeing what's available on the roads. Obviously the, the last uh, two years, the, the big events have all been cancelled to COVID, but the year before that, you know, was such a, a brilliant year, just getting a top 10 in the scene here, you know, like really establishing yourself and, um, Everything's just been quiet road racing for the last few years and then getting back in touch with people. And um, yeah, obviously, do you want to, people already know about your, um, your lower classes, but do you want to just run through your sort of stable of bikes and what you're going to be doing this year? Yeah, so it's a case of um, we've, hit, we've hit the ground running really this year. It's a case of um, I'm very, very, very lucky that um, I'm still on board with the counting racing team and we're racing Kawasaki 600 and Kawasaki Super Twin. But there's a, a lot of... A lot of um, a lot of moving parts, put it that way. So it's stuff like with the TT concerned and even the Northwest 200 are concerned. It's like the regs haven't been fully released on like the Super Sport. So we've got a 600, but come with the TT, are you allowed to run 636s? Are you allowed to run 765s? Are you allowed to run like higher capacity bikes like they do in the Worlds? So we've still got our hands tied on that side of things because we're trying to figure out where to spend the money because I'm... Last, uh, Jesus, man, 2019, it's like a lifetime ago, and it's like, I'm not the only one, but being a pure roads man, it has hindrances massively on that side of things, but, yeah, we've just, we've just got to, we've just got to wait, we're in February now, mate, mm-hmm. February, and you know, it's going to be, May, well, on the beginning of May, really, you know, let's call it the beginning of May, we're going to be at the Northwest, and it's like, we don't even know what we're going to be putting in the chassis. Is it going to be a 636? Is it not? It's just, oh, it's a bloody nightmare. And then the good thing that the accountants are very much, were very much similar to the, the crow performance, you know, where it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely not paying for a ride, but I put all my money in. Fran puts all his money in. Chloe puts some of her money in. And then Neil puts all his money in. You're thinking, it's just a family effort. And going to the events like that, it really, we budget it, say, on three bikes, we're budgeting that on 10 grand a meeting, which you know, compared to British superbikes, you're spanking that no problem in a weekend. But when you think for a little privateer team like us on the roads, it's it's a lot of money to find. Mm. But as far as the big bike option, you know, my the biggest problem is since 2019, people had their seats confirmed for the 2020 season, and a lot of team, but well, they haven't they haven't needed to move, have they? 
you know, it's just a, it's a case of like, all right, well, the seat's still there. We've got everything prepped and ready to go. But behind the scenes on a lot of teams, there's been a lot of moving parts. You know, people are starting to get itchy feet and there's a lot of different, different, well, dynamics change. Like a lot more people are interested in the Yamaha R1. You know, there's a few things change with the BMWs, like the Honda element. And it's like, there's a couple of people who haven't actually fully announced what they're doing yet. Like, as far as the big hitters are concerned, and you think, well, what's going on that side of things? But I've spoken to a lot of people, and that's something I've never done before. I've never, ever had, the, quite frankly, the, the, the confidence to actually go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to ring them. Because the, the worst thing they can say is no. And I'm thinking, right, bollocks to it. So I've rang a few people. People would now just tell us who you've rang. And I'm like, nah, it's not yet anyway. Don't worry, I'll blurt it out later on. But at the moment, I'm not going to. And... um. But it's all come down to it. Like I say, Chrissy, we're in February and I'm going to buy my own big bike. Again, it's a case of nothing's on the table. Like, you know, as far as running a, a, a new competitive bike. And uh, this is uh, going to be a bit of a shock, but I'm going to end up running a BMW again as well. I'll probably end up on an S1000RR because it's 10 grand more to go down the M option, but the M option is a stocker, so I'm, I won't be getting a superbike, but I can run a stocker in the superbike classes as well. So trust, trying to put that together is a is a fair bit more, but the difference between me and you is you're trying to build a full superbike infrastructure. You know, I'm very, very lucky that I've got the Countons on board, and they're, they've already got the awning set up there, which is brilliant, but I'm going to try and buy my own awning, like, you know, one of them instant pop-up shelters or something on those lines and separate it off because I'm going to be buying a bike with one of my sponsors as well. So he'll be putting all of his money in, I'll be putting mine, and then I'll have to find the running costs. And I've got some really, like yourself, good personal sponsors, you know, like the he like the Hay family, they're fully behind us on that side of things, which is great. And... Yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm shitting myself with the BM. I am, because I know the bike's absolutely brilliant. That they, they are absolutely brilliant. Like, you know, look what you did on them and, you know, look what Hickman's doing, you know, for the roads element. It, they are a fantastic package, but it's, the thing I'm fighting on the uphill battle is, is the technology side of it. That's the truth. You know, it's like, it's being able to have that infrastructure there to be able to check the bike over and run it properly. And that's something that you need to rely on now. And like the good thing is with you doing the Crow performance, you've, you've got Crowy there. You know what I mean? He's practically German himself now, isn't he? You know, he knows that much like about it and he's got a very close relationship with Alpha. But this is the problem. I'm racing against Crowy <laughs> on the roads and, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, everyone's there to help each other out. But going there, that's my only worry with the BM. It's that that technology element of it, but they are a strong, reliable bike. And in terms of to get your licences before the Northwest and the TT, do you mm. have to do a few club races or something? So they actually haven't released that side of things on the ACU. So normally you have to do, hey, this is testiness, this is testiness. You have to have 10 signatures every year to go to the Isle of Man, but the, the TT, once you've done it, that counts as two, or no, I think it counts as four. I believe. So you and then you have to get two two days in the new year. So I'm going to be doing the Northeast Club are back on the cards, Good. which is great. They they've come out the road work again. They've done the they've done they did the safe option with the COVID years have just kept the heads down, but now that's come back, they have released their calendar. So they're doing the Northeast. Um, sorry, Northeast man. The Northeast Club are doing East Fortune twice, but begin the year. It's like in the April time. Uh, go on their social media to find out the exact date. But they're going to Croft, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back there. But I'll do them two meetings, and that gets where the, the signature is ready for 2022. Class. Which is brilliant. So in theory, I could do that meeting on the big bike and then park it up. Right. But like I was saying, yeah, I'm like I'm a little bit on that shit, shit your pants fence, really, because like everyone I'm competing against have got, say, <laughs> they've got some brass, cause, or the, and they're all... If they don't have brass, they're just chucking it at the wall like what, what we're doing. And in terms of uh, the big bike, so if in an ideal situation you've got, say you do Croft, maybe another club race, you go Northwest, yep. TT, yep. Ulster, yep. Macau, if it's on. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, definitely, I'll definitely go to Macau. Definitely go to Macau, but I'm not sure if I'll take my own bike. Right, or maybe get a T, yeah. I would like to go with a different T, and the reason I'm saying that is it's just obviously that extra expenditure, and it's like, I've always been peers, you go rider. Yeah. And like, I'm I'm, I'm having to find, well, I'm going to have to beg Nat West to... <laughs> 
loan us the money to go get the big bike myself. But how is there any other big events that I've missed off there? Or is that no, I'm, I'm trying to think really. It's a and, case of like... And around that, it'll be like sort of Scarborough. It's, we it's see Scarborough don't run big bikes. Yeah, sorry, stuff like that. that. Yeah, so I meant on the six hundreds, like all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a case of we'll be doing the the classic TT, um, Armoy, um, the Scarbers if they get up and go in on that side of things. Yeah, mainly it's a full roads, a full roads element of it. But um, I'll be the BSB this year. As much as it is, it is absolutely amazing. I just can't afford it. We're like focusing on the roads back on it. But I'll tell you what. It, I, I was actually speaking to Crow when we were down at Peter Bose's place and it, it's a bit like, how do we normally do this? You know, with the tight timetable of just being able to go to the Northwest. But lucky for us, with the, the, the way the calendar lies this year, there's a two-week gap between the TD. Normally, it's a week gap. And that gives us a lot of time because, to be blunt, like if I, if I shit an engine at uh, the Northwest, that's it's not a t- it's not a great big turnaround, and if you have a crash or anything like that, it's a bit like mm-hmm. you've got to do it. But the way the events lie, normally, I love the Northwest, I love the crack and everything, but I'm going to have to do it this year. It's always been a luxury for me to do that. I've only done it twice, and it's always been like I've got to focus on the TD, got to focus on the TD. But the way everything's starting to come round, and when you look at the calendar, especially being like uh, the counties are from Yorkshire, <laughs> and everything in the beginning of the year with like no limits and thunder sport and everything on that side of things it's all right down at the bottom or right across like silverstone and then like uh where's the one that horrible slippy track far out give me a name you go down halfway and then you go right across man Wooten park no the other way <laughs> east <laughs> Snedden, Snedden, I that way. So everything's like a country mile away. So, and I tell you what, I would, like yet again, speaking to Crowy, he was saying that uh, the Silverstone one with no limit sold out in twenty four hours. Wow, that just shows how many people are keen to get going again. But as far as like our track time, it's all looking strong for the BM. I'm very confident with the six hundred and the Super Twin. You know, as far as the prep, because the countings are doing it. You know, I can, mm. I generally believe if I didn't have, if I didn't hop on the Twin. Like from if I had one meeting on the twin, I'd be over the moon with that. Yeah, I would be like that. That bike is I trust that team that much and everything like that. I'd get on it and just off I go on it. Could I just uh, jump in and ask? You mentioned about the six hundred six three six. Yeah. So if the if they say it's an open open book, so it's your choice six hundred or six three six. Which one would you prefer for the roads? Yeah, six three six. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Well, you know the mad thing is with the six three six, it's like it's a thirty six oversight. But the mad thing is the power doesn't. The 600 and the 636 share the same piston. The yep. piston size is the correct, but it's the stroke. Mm-hmm. Now, the stroke, now, that's what Jack Kennedy was struggling with massively, was like the pickup out the corner. So the R6 can actually drive out the turns. But once you've got the inertia of a 636 going, it's exactly, it's nigh on the same. It's an, like a tuned R6, not right. stock. You know, if they're both on the similar tune pattern, yeah. but they're just as quick in a straight line. But when you get to somewhere like the Northwest and the TT, especially the TT, it's 37 mile long, you know, and you're just carrying momentum. So if I was going to pick a bike out the two, the other, like the 600 wear on is like 130 something, but the other, the 636 can get up to nearly 140 out of them. Right. So uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, just from, know. just from watching from the sidelines, the, um, the 600, uh, say like Ben Curry and, um, Jack Kennedy. Yeah. 600 look faster every track. Yeah, no, totally. But I'll tell you what, if you watched Jack Kennedy last year, bet he's gone to Martry and Yamaha, but there is personal reasons, everything like that. I don't know why. But if you watched that uh, that 636, he was riding an absolute shite out of that. That's what the I mean. The like and everything. It, the 600 looked a much better bike. That's why I'm, I don't understand why he's in 636 prefer. In every way, it looked a better handling bike and faster than Ben Curry's. But you see, that, that like we're advancing nine here. We can't get that level of tune. But a six, we can get a cheaper, higher level of tune with a 636 yeah. mm-hmm. than that just for the straight line. Oomph. I totally agree. The chassis will be more forgiving, but we don't have we don't have an R6, you Fair know, enough. like a full on. So you're just waiting for the regs to be released. And if they're allowed 636s, that's what you'll be going on. Pretty much, yeah. I. So yeah. like, but the good thing is, you see, on that side of things, you can... I don't, I'm waiting for the regs to come out because mm-hmm. um, if, if things have to adapt, because like... I think throttle, like air boxes and all that, everything's down to a fine tooth comb. So yeah. what would be ideal, what would be an ideal is that you could put a 636 engine in a, a 600. But yeah. 
I don't know. Also, I do not know. Also, um, do you know how you, you asked me before about like my sort of realistic... Um, I'm going to win everything. Um, <laughs> I'm going to win everything, mate. <laughs> realistic ambitions. Uh, do you have any sort of um, realistic targets or would you prefer not to talk about it? On any of the bikes? Well, I've, I've always been realistic with me racing. Always been realistic. And, um, and even like going backwards... I got. I never thought I'd even get to get in a race, and I bought a bike, and got into a club race, and I went. I'm going to stay at the Northeast Club and do three rounds for the rest of my life. Never ever would I thought I'd get to the Manx Grand Prix. You know, it's been a dream. Got to the Manx, and my old man said, "Why don't you have a crack at the TT?" I'm going. I'm never going to get an entry. I got to the TT. My first race, like you know, and I went from like a 74 mile an hour lap by myself first one. I'm thinking, I'm never going to get over 100, and then that progression, and that's what I fed off. At no point have I ever, ever got on a motorcycle and thought, I'm going to win. That's my... That I'm, I am very open and very open with everyone. But because of my nature, I haven't got that, like, you know, I'm not sitting there going, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. I get on a bike and go, I'm going to go for it as hard as I can. And that's where it's became an addiction for me. And, I'm, and I don't mind saying the word addiction. People use that as quite a negative thing, but I'm very proud of that. And I find that drive. And now we've gotten the top 10. TT, if I breach the top six, I'll be over the moon. Because it really, like, people say, oh, that's only four positions. But in this game, if you look at the laps and the speeds and everything like that, breaching the top six, 600 wise, can't see why not. Really can't see why not. Mm. Without, Super, um, do you know how you're saying about, like, beating my drum without beating your drum um, the last time you were on the 600 you had a, a decent finish and your bike was extremely slow yeah in a straight line so you were given off like I remember seeing the speed traps and you were given off like 10 mile an hour 12 mile an hour or yeah. something so if you can get the 600 up to speed yeah like you say sorry then what were you going to say twin and twin wise you know it's a bit like you're competing like it'll be interesting to see what happens with this Norton element because that that, bit that of that's a bit of a that's a bit of a red circle for me. That no, you know what I mean. But like, um, and then Michael Dunlop, he's always an enigma in the sport. He always keeps his powder dry. If he gets on a pattern, let's see what happens. Jamie Coward is on the best Kawasaki on that grade period. You know what I mean? Farquhar's coming out of the scenery again. So Derek McGee, you know Derek McGee, yeah Derek McGee. He's a he's a podium finisher, but you know, it's Super Twin racing, and. To be blunt, I'm capable of a podium. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to road racing, you need lady luck on you. And this is the first year I'm sitting here going, you know what? I'm capable of it. Mm. I am on a super twin, I am capable of a podium finish. But it's a it's about being on the day. That is I'm capable of it, but an ambition, you know, like yeah, that is an ambition. And that it, would be amazing. A podium in any any of those would and be. And in terms of, uh, th there will be some people either listening or watching that. Laughing at cut. No, oh my God. Like, <laughs> no, son, there's not a bloody hope you're going to get that. I was going to say that. Like, haven't followed our, um, like, listened to the Story podcast time. for a while. Yeah. And uh, they won't even, like, be familiar with, like, the 130 Club and that type of thing. Do you want to uh, give uh, just a quick rundown? And obviously, what, what are you doing this year? Are you continuing with the 130 Club? Well, the, yeah, the 130 Club like started from like in 2019 you know after doing 129.6 yeah. <laughs> upsetting that isn't it upsetting and it's to be i tell you what you know when you're talking about ambition that's going to be the worst thing for us so you know going back to your question it's like the 130 started because you need money to take a step look at what you literally this is what this whole episode is about it's about every racer only get sick of racing motorcycles because of the politics and that politics becomes from ambition and drive and everything if if we were generally all happy about getting on a motorcycle you would have stuck away your heart is that not a fact like you go do a race and god i'll do one race a year and i'll be happy for the rest of my life but it's certain individuals like all of us and all the racers listening to this that is very much the problem in racing You're like i want more i want more and i want more so the 130 club started because of that. And I said, well, you know, we need to get the funds in. So for 130 quid, you get a, you know, a, you get a, a hoodie, a t-shirt, you get a poster and everything. And on the Facebook group, and I've got it. Now, anyone, all my club members that are listening to this now, we're going fucking useless with that Facebook, but I'm useless with all of it. And to be fair, if I do put anything out, it is on the 130 club. And I do apologize to you lot. But now that we're getting into the swing of things, now that the BMW news, so I've told them already about the BMW news, and now things can get rolling and we can stay very much up to date with that. 
but that started off last year. I've already spent that. I haven't asked for any more money. A lot of people have put more money in, you know, like another 130 quid because that money was already spent in preparation for 2020. And well, we're a long way away from that now, aren't we? So, but like I was saying, that's my fear is, you know, when you set a target, I'm going to put, and I'll tell you what, that was one thing I learned a lot from this weekend. We went in that Super Bowl thing and I absolutely bollocks it. You know, I just tried too hard. I was pushing too much. I was making stupid mistakes. And that's my little bit of worry, really, to be fair. It's like getting back to the Isle of Man and like, yes, there's a bit of hiatus about it. You know, there's like, yeah, you've had two years off, but in the same breath, nah, there's, that's not really an excuse. Yes, bed yourself into it. But we all have a year off. I know we get the classic, but that well, the the yeah. usual is a year off, and then yeah. we've missed two years, so it's like three years. It's a year plus the two years, so it's like three years that you haven't been there. But you still get the quarter bridge turn right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and th- there is that element now. If I don't get the one thirty this year, I'll be I will be gutted because every year I've gone two mile an hour quicker every time I've gone every year. And that always comes in the senior race because I've calmed down and gone, right, this is your last time out and you just flow and you get six laps and off you go. But uh, that I am worried of because I want it so much. And I genuinely believe when I break that 130 once, I think I, yeah, I think you just, I'll calm down. But that is such, that is such an iconic thing for me. Like when I first started, what, like I've always followed my dad racing. And at that point, you know, I was growing up thinking, oh, I'm going to go racing. Seeing John McGuinness crack the 130, the world went fucking mental when he did a 130. And I'm thinking, I'm never going to do 100 mile an hour. And I'm that, I'm, I'm like a midge's dick off 130. <laughs> and you think that, in that lap, that was a gear change. And I can sit here and go, that's where the mistake was. Even now, two years later, I'm going, that's my mistake, that's my mistake. And that was on the ZX10 mm-hmm. on a bike that, you know, had a great bunch of lads with no tests and, or anything like that, and the bike wasn't set up. It really wasn't set up suspension-wise, but the bike wasn't set up, and I'm hopefully going to attack that a fair bit different. But I'm, I'm I am nervous to not about getting that one thing. You know, right? This feels like an interview. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, a question that I'm dying to ask you. Right, so uh, two scenarios, and you've got to pick one. Yeah. Would you pr- Would you prefer to do your to break 130, like do 130.5 mile an hour lap, but uh, the winner, say Hickman, does 137, so you're like six and a half mile an hour off. Yeah. Or would you prefer to do 129, but the winner does 132, so you're like much, much closer to the, the winner, but 129, or would you prefer to get the 130 and be miles off? 130. Would you? One, and the reason I'm saying that is because I'm not... <laughs> nah, it's like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Peter Hickman. I'm not a Dean Harrison, you know, they've got the full this, full that. And I would love to get to that level. I am working to try and get to that level, but I'm I'm just doing it bit by bit. And, you know, time is an illusion that people almost restrain themselves to it. But I've got every year I'm learning and I'm trying to do the best I've got. And and I've always, I've never ever, I've always worked for what I, mate, I work, you know, I'm not going to go down that road again, but I work my ass off to go race and, and I've not been in debt. And that's why I, this pressure pot's, folding because the pressure this year to be able to get the Isle of Man you have to be on the page this year is so crucial for road racing people don't a lot of people do understand that but a lot of people don't because it's been two years off and if people don't enjoy the circus is what they're used to that's a big issue that Mm -hmm. but like going back to what you were saying it's like that 130 for me is so Iconic, it's such a, and yeah, you've got Hickman going around at a thirty-five. I, that's unreal. That is absolutely unreal. He's on the best bike and he's 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 he's, he's top of his game. He's a he's a British superbike winner, and but if I can do that, that one thirty is really important to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm prop I'm willing to chuck everything at it to go get it. But it chuck everything. I know you're at saying it. that, but it's the it, um you know. If you don't do it this year, then it's another year, and you get it's, you know it's not your right. It's but you see in the same breath though. A lot of riders have done that, you know, and that, that's what is a repetitive issue. Like not issues, the total wrong word, but you speak to riders like Burrows that we had on last week. You know, he said I tried for years to get that one twenty five, one twenty five, one twenty five, 
And you think, Jesus, that, you know, you, you just get into that bubble of going like Ian Mackman, he's one of my best friends. You know, he did a 124 and you think, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And you're like edging them, come on, and you think, and trying to break them barriers is so hard. I think that's for every rider and that's why I look up to you so much. Like when I'm asking you questions, it's a bit like you have to change, you have to change something quite drastically every time to go achieve that. And like that Isle of Man, that Isle of Man is a, it's, it, it's a fantastic curse. It's just like, you're going in like, you know, you cr- like I'm, you can do the big, but like, <laughs> it's a, a psychological break. Like I can go around Croft, go around and go, right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. And then if someone like pulls up and goes, you can't do this, I'll go and do that. And that's the thing about the Isle of Man is well, like, I'm watching going through um, and you just tell yourself going, it's all about balls sometimes. You just go, right go through it flat and see what happens and like you've got to be willing to go for that and that that, that that's something I, I feel like I've got over a lot of other riders I do you know just like right you know what <laughs> I'm just got like crunk your body right you, you rise up into it it's six back to fifth but you can imagine them delays in time like you, so, you short circuit lads are doing everything all at once you're like robots it's beautiful to watch you're just going in going bang 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 bang, bang, bang then off but the Isle of Man, it's literally, you're telling your brain to go hold, hold. It's like Mel Gibson in Braveheart. You're like, hold, and you're going up. And you just go six, fifth, bang, straight back on it. And you're just going through, going, don't hit the wall <laughs> on the exit. Like, coming through um, Balagheri. Like, I watch Bruce Anstey through there, like, um, on an onboard. And I pause it and listen to the engine notes. Michael Dunlop goes through there, and he's six, fifth, and sh- I mean, mate, the, you can hear the valves tapping off it. Like, Jesus, where? And there's other lads that go through and they're off. And uh, like Cameron Donald went through there. And yet he's won two TTs, mind. He went through there, six, fifth. And, blah, and it was quite lazy on the exit. But then that worked. It, and, it, and then you start thinking about, you can almost have too much knowledge in this game. You think, well, why did that work? And that didn't. And you can overthink it. Mm. But I remember going through there like not lifting Bruce went through there and he just went and you could just hear the inertia change in the tyres he's like what? and he's like F-. he's held that flat he's held that flat and the only note change was the tyre wall I went through there right <laughs> I went there and I'm thinking I'm on a crappy 600 my own 600 I built with me dad I've got a max and shock standard everything brake lines a lot everything I'm going if Bruce can hit it flat so can I. I tell you what, right? There's a hair bale on the exit. I rubbed my ass on that hair bale exit all the way down. And I just went, right, I've hit that flat on a crappy bike. The next time I came round, I hit it flat again, but I was in the middle of the road. Because you, your body freezes up and you're like, you just lock on and you're going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're trying to like tell you something, that, trying to tell your body to do something that it's not prepared to do. But then once you calm it down, do you, know, flows? do you know, um, I don't know if it's anything you've There'll be a asked. load of people listening to Balagari this year going, is the talk going to roll? Um, <laughs> do you know in terms of like doing onboard laps in your head and like knowing what things do you, um, to like try and keep keep your mind busy in this massive gap that we've had on, do you sometimes sit and do full laps of the TT in your head or? Um, you know what, I'm, I need to do, I'm, I'm very conscious about that and uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I get sucked up in everyone else's bullshit. I need to start like like sitting here now in February. It's like I need to and I, I need to sort myself out. To be fair, Chrissy, I massively need to sort myself out because like leading up, you normally get in a pattern. It's like right January, just on boards, on boards, on boards, and yeah, I've got a system that I really like how I watch on boards. I've done nothing of that. I'm thinking that's that's not good, and because with the two years off, I need to go to the Isle of Man again. Like I've never ever been. I've never drove over and gone done laps. Ever. I do fancy doing an uh, Isle of Man tour sometimes. Yeah, how, well, who, <laughs> Take who, the trail around. Well, who have we got over there? Right, fair, Nathan yeah. Harrison's over there. He's 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 gonna go well. He's been out in Spain all the time at the minute. He's definitely allowed to go for, but we've already done Connor Cummins, but we could do him again. Who who else could we get? Paul over Phillips there? in the flesh. Paul Phillips in the flesh. Oh, Milky Quail. Liam Quail, we could get we could get we're doing an Isle of Man tour, kids. There you are. That's a, a, a that'll lead up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> um 
Lovely. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a few Patreon questions about a uh, thing. Uh, you didn't mention about the 130, so if people want to join in, just um, how, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, so just drop us a message on uh, like Facebook and I, I need I need to catch up on that sort of thing uh, massively. Just need to get everything reordered. Yeah, I've, had to change, I've had to change stockers because they lost the old design as well. Right. So I'm having to reprogram all that and waiting for samples to get back in turn. So that that's kicking off again. We've got good. Um, 18 messages. So Shut up, man. Yeah. Right, crack on with them, first, son. Crack on with them. First one, Mark Prescott is just asking about the news. So obviously, I've I've, uh, I've already mentioned that, but I'll write on the Patreon page so they'll know early anyway. What are Dom's plans this year and what bikes will he be riding? So we've done that one. Yep. Uh, Liam Evans. So a question for Dom. With TT organisers announcing smaller starting grids for races, do you think the event might lose some of its charm with less privacy as being given a shot at racing the mountain course? Not for the TT. Yeah. I just, like the TT is it's 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 had to adapt every year to survive. And the, the thing is, it's like it's so easy to pick on everyone, isn't it? You know, you just think and I'm I'm generally gutted for them people that can't make it. I really am gutted, but People don't see that it, it's the little crap. It's that insurance element. Everyone's trying to fight for that insurance thing. And it's like the fact that we've got to change helmets this year for the FIM ones. Yeah. Arguably, this is my honest opinion. You know, that that's something I didn't have to change. For years prior, the RIs and the showies and everything, everything's been up the spec. But I don't know these facts. This is my this is my assumption of the situation is the fact that every year they have got to improve safety. They've got to. It's like any other business. You know, I'm in the tree game. You know what I mean? Every year you've got to spin up some something to show someone that you're improving it somehow, even if it's minor. It's like, right, instead of writing with the right hand, we're going to go with the left because it rev- gets rid of tennis elbows, some shite like that. But like that is massively stinging, even like myself and everyone. So them little changes and it's like the reducing of numbers, it's making the paddock safer. Because it may need to take like make paddock, you know, um, fire gaps between them, and it's all these little, little things. I think I don't think as a spectator, because I've never been a spectator. I don't think it's going to be as damaging. Mm-hmm. I think the spectacle's just going to be as great, and I think you know them them. It's ten riders less. The races are probably going to be faster as well, aren't they? I would say now it's like um, the lapping situation. Yeah, you know, it's just, like uh, yeah, uh, probably better all around. Yeah. Uh, good question, Jesse Mortimer. I'll just give him a quick shout out. He can ride a bike, that boy. Yeah, he like, did, he that did boy can ride a bike. He did very well at, uh, on the flat track. But uh, it was great to meet Alan Carter this weekend. Would be cool to hear a bit more about him and his role with you, Chrissy, as he seems to be a brilliant influence to have around. And for Dom, what will you be doing? Will you be doing much classic racing this year? So, yeah, a few people have a- actually asked uh, for Alan to be on the podcast, and he was on very early on. But we'll One get of the Mark him- Ones, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, we'll get him back on sometime soon. But yeah, uh, are you planning on doing any classic racing? Yeah, going to try and do his. Um... As much, like just it's that I plan everything around the TT, so everything after that is a bonus. Mm-hmm. That includes the Ulster and the Southern and everything. You know, I want to do it all. It yeah. just all depends on the money. But no, as far as the classics are concerned, I'll I'll be definitely hopefully doing Pembury. I'll be doing Tanrigi with the Davies team. This is all with the Davies team. So I'll be doing Cookstown One Hundred with the Counting team, mm-hmm. and then doing Tanrigi. So I'm trying to think of the which way that order is. I think it's Tanrigi first, then Cookstown. So you will. Uh, I'm hope I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm trying to remember that anyway. So I'll be doing Davies with a uh, Tamragate and then Countons with a six hundred, which is good. Yeah, class. I oh, look forward to seeing you out on that. Uh, Andy H, has the podcast led led to better sponsorship offers or ride offers? Also, a couple of favourite moments. <laughs> this whole episode's about. <laughs> Do you know what? it's funny because it's uh, uh, probably uh, obviously the podcast grown in its profile all the time, and we're, we're probably getting more privateers this time goes on. But uh, no, it's um. It's it's introduced us to some, well, I can speak for myself. It's introduced us to loads of great people. And uh, I've, I've managed to uh, like meet people through the podcast that have helped us. So uh, for me, it's, um, yeah, it's been fantastic for in, in that regard. Um, what yeah, about yourself? Yeah, same thing. I think, you know, it's... Um, like 130 Club and that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that, that element of it. But no, like, um, because at the end of the day, Chris, we've we put all the work in, you know, like... But people just think because you've got this, people think you get loads of that. But not, it's not, is it? You know, it's. But at the end of the day, you get a lot of people coming up to you going, "Oh, you, you know, it's you're doing good work, and you're getting this, and you're getting uh, like." I do. I yeah. do also, although it is a lot of uh, a lot of work and a lot of um, sort of t- uh, tired nights and stuff. I do really appreciate 
the the fact that we have this platform i know a lot yeah. of uh, you know nearly all the other riders don't have uh, like a weekly opportunity to to speak to a load of people so yeah although it is I, I do sort of see it as a sort of service to do it i've i really appreciate the have having this opportunity and i really appreciate the people that that listen and sort of comment on things and stuff it's um it's actually like yeah really really nice and to be honest you know you know when i was talking about the confidence about ringing people mm-hmm. i think this platform's Giving us that confidence to yeah. actually go, you know what? I'm, but, I'm just going to give them a ring, and they go, "Are you Chris's mate?" I can't. <laughs> I am. I'm. 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 I'm Chris's mate. Say, you, be, got, you got any bare brake pads? Be, be, got... <laughs> be honest. Do you do you ring them up and say, "Hi, it's Dom from Chasing the Racing." Have I shite? <laughs> have I shite? No, no. I can't. I'm Chris's fat mate. You know that. <laughs> uh, I t- I just just quickly, by the way, me and Dom have just got these class new business cards. So if anyone ever sees us, come over and ask. It's ask just us. not tapping because you, you, they're literally like you just go close to a phone and then. It brings up all like all the podcast like platforms now. And, and it class. takes your credit card details yeah, as well. <laughs> so we give you something and we'll get it back. Yeah, so we've got um, Peter Buchanan. Have you been keeping up with the MotoGP test? What do you think is going to be the dark horse? That, who do you think is going to be the dark horse this year? I haven't massively been keeping an eye on it, but yeah, I've seen uh, Vinales was leading on Thursday, I think it was, first or second day. By the time this podcast goes out, it'll all be a bit outdated, yeah. but I think Bastanini was fastest today. Haven't really been massively keeping an eye on it, but who's the dark horse for me? Um, it's difficult, really. What, just, do you have one? You know who's kind of accidentally become a dark horse? Marquez? You know, with this injury and the eyesight thing, you're thinking, mm. he, got, is he, he crashed is again he, today. I think did he? He was, he was ninth overall. But uh, I think he's really happy with the changes Honda have made. So, yeah, it's difficult to say. So, it'll be, yeah, I think he's become a dark horse, even though he's won the championship God knows how many times. But um, Andy Graham, it's gone really quiet on what you guys are up to this season. Any <laughs> updates? I don't know if any of the other patrons are up for us up for a sponsorship deal between us could put it out there well we're kind of both running sort of like an individual if if you have companies that we could people can help us both out and if um we've both got our sort of clubs as well for individuals so uh yeah it would be unbelievable like incredibly- say you're part of my club without paying yeah, for a member know, so you'll have to pay to be and i'll join the pay to be of and, your um, son. <laughs> incredibly grateful for uh for your support andy there so yeah thanks very much i do appreciate that and um I'm just, you know, I've put that idea about the little squares. I'm dreading someone puts like a really inappropriate. <laughs> well, there goes my idea. <laughs> Have like a, maybe blurred out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, can you drink rich energy through your eye? Def- oh. <laughs> I wouldn't want to no. try that one, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Give it a go anyway. Nice plug, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ken O'Shea. Hey, Dom, are you doing the 700 this year? 12 of us heading over in July. 700? Um, that's definitely an event I want to do. Um, it uh, goes without saying the Counting family aren't doing it. And for those who have tuned in and don't know that, it's um, one of my, one of my uh, best friends, D, James Counting. Um, he lost his life at the Southern, so the Counting team don't want to go there. And like I said many moons ago on previous episode, that you know they they love the event. They think it's a great event, and. But they don't want to go back for personal reasons, and that goes without saying. So I won't be there with the counting team, but I've already discussed. We've had a meeting, sit down with them, and they are more than like you know, like, right, Don, if you want to go do the Southern, you know, and if you want to go with a different team, and God love them, Fran actually said, look, you know, I'd, I'd even lend you the bikes, but I said to Fran, I said, Fran, I am not going anywhere on your bikes without you. That's not how I want to. I've learned I've, these last two years. I've learned so much about that, and it's about having the atmosphere, the right team atmosphere. And I think that's like even going jumping that back to you because I think that's why you're going to have a shit hot year because you've got the right people around you. And it, like, and the good thing is, if you don't hit your ambitions or your targets, you know you've done the right thing by having the right people around you. I think mm-hmm. it's uh, it's an exciting year, exciting Class. year. But hopefully, yeah, um, hopefully get to catch up with the Southern anyway. That'd Class. be great. Um, Alex Hunt, what do you guys do? Keep bike fit over the winter. Do you follow any other podcasts or YouTubers? Uh, I'll I'll start with that one. Uh, fitness, yeah, I've been recently working with a with a trainer, and it's the first time I've ever done done that. Uh, I've always kind of done my own thing from. When I was much younger, I was really into like loads of sports. So I was naturally like very fit without having to do anything bike specific. Uh, over the last few years, I've I've not 
uh, made a, a massive thing of my fitness, really. Um, especially the year that I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, the, the year that I actually won the championship and had the most success. Uh, I started that season with a bad injury, which stopped us from doing any training whatsoever in the run up to it. And then by the time the season started and um, I was that busy in between the rounds, so I pretty much didn't train that for the full off season and the because of my injury and then Aye. the full season. And it had... And ironically, actually, I had my best year uh, and other times where I've put like a lot of effort into training and maybe not done so well, but I don't, it's not like a co co uh, the cause correlation thing. Uh, and I'm, for the first time, I've been unbelievably strict this winter so far, um, but completely different type of training than what I've ever done before um, in terms of like a real structured gym workout. I've never done weights before. In term, I've always thought to myself, wait, I've, I've haven't wanted to put on weight in terms of like bulking up. So I've never really done weights. And um, for the first time I've been doing strength work, uh, which I like, advise from my trainer. And I've, I've actually been really enjoying it. Um, you know, for the last um, month or so, I've been so every night after work, I'm, I'm in the gym. Sometimes I'm there for like three hours. Um, most nights I'm there between two and three hours. Um, so I'm. It's, Fair it's, play, yeah, mate. it's a huge commitment, and but I'm I'm really enjoying it to be honest. So uh, yeah, I'll sort of keep everyone updated on that for the YouTube for the podcast and YouTubers. Um, I really <laughs> I really like the 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 Rich Energy sponsored podcast uh, off track with Dave Neal, who's one of our patrons. Um, similar sort of <laughs> platform, the same sort of uh, podcast of what we do. Also, so I d I like loads of podcasts that have nothing to do with bike racing in terms of um YouTube. I'm just trying to think. I haven't missed anyone out there. In terms of YouTube channels, I really love uh, all of Taylor McKenzie stuff, oh, Lee Johnson yeah, stuff, brilliant. Hi. Um, and 44 Teeth. Massive fan of the 44 Teeth lads. And I think that's more or less all of the sort of vlogs and stuff I watch. Oh, and obviously uh, Billy Bolt and Tommy Searles. I like I like them. Um, <laughs> you want to buy yourself? Nah. Not None anything. of it. No, no. It's... Uh... No, to be fair, it's just all I hear is chainsaw rattles going through my brain. So no, no, I've, <laughs> fact, I've, I've, I've just never followed. I've never nah, just. Oh, uh, sorry. No. The, the TT have just released a podcast as well. Trying to get them a plug. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> you, you'll be a guest on there soon. I don't think I will. You know, you will be, man. Do you want to bet? Yeah, I'll, Do you want to bet? bet? Remember yeah. when we used to like openly gamble on air? Let's let's go back to these days. I'll give a pound, a pound, a pound on Piss it. off! Come on, you've got time. Yeah, pound, bollocks. Got a pound. A pound. So if you're on it before think... the TT, you owe me a quid. And if Put a fiver on, on it. I'm going to fiver. Fiver. Right, here, here we go. go. Champion. Uh, hey, so... Billy, speaking of Billy Bolt, we haven't done with Speedway Challenge and he's been practising. Ah, yeah, There's a hundred quid on that. Uh -huh. And I do not have a hundred quid to chuck at that bet. So... Uh, <laughs> and he listens. Billy, get it sorted, son. Uh -huh. Get it sorted. I do listen to some very odd sort of uh, off completely <laughs> nothing to do with bike racing podcasts. But if anyone, that brigade. if anyone wants to know about them sort of podcasts, then just drop us a message. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the that sounded right. incredibly seeded. No, That's it's, brilliant. It's nothing it. weird. It's just uh, nothing to do yeah, with bike racing. So, like, so uh, what uh, got up to Luke? Hi, do you think? Uh, sorry. So hi, who do you think could be the dark horses for the TT this year? I think James Hillier might win the Super Sport as he is on an R6 this year. I think he's he will be strong, although he hasn't been doing a great deal of tarmac racing over the last few years. But, but then he's, Tim, he's 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 always been like that. Mm -hmm. For me, and it, for me, a, dark horses. Um, and all the all the people that I think will do well are people that I would expect to do yes. well. So therefore, by definition, they're not dark horses. Um, so by dark horses, it would have to be someone that the majority of people don't think is going to do very well. And for that. Um, a little bit of a curveball, although people will expect him to do reasonably well. Brian McCormick got a good chance of doing particularly well just because of A, being teammates with Peter Hickman, and B, having two years of full super uh, BSB. You would expect him to be, to be fair, reasonably strong. In my opinion, he, he'll call me out for whatever it is when I'm going to say this, but he, really, he's the only one with the pressure on him from the outside. It, like, he put... Nah, I'm not sure if that's a fair comment to say, but like you just said, you know, I think... He's got. He's definitely. He's on it. the biggest team. Period. He's definitely on the biggest team. He's on the best bike. He's been two two years of British. 
And yeah, he's got absolutely everything in front of him. And you think, God, oh, Bennett, mm. I mean, here we go. And I think he's going to go well. He's determined, and he, he can do it. As as a prediction, I do uh, I do feel Davy Todd's going to be very strong. Um, yeah, I just feel like he's had a few. He hasn't like, announced he, what he's doing yet either. No, but um, he will. He'll he'll have a top ride, and I do expect him to do uh, very well. To be honest, definitely. I think me, my dark horse. I think like. Is actually Nathan Harrison, Isle of Man local, you know, and um, he's been putting in some serious track time. Mm. Like, go follow him on social media and stuff like that. And that, like, I think him, like, James Hind, and like, um, James Hind's not like a dark horse anymore, if you know what I mean. People yeah. are just seeing what he's capable of. He's been doing British. He's got the right amount of sponsors, he's got the right amount of finances, and he's doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And what I like about him is, um, He's like he's like the new Bruce. Yeah, he's like the new Bruce. You know, he keeps his head down, plows on, and he's going places without a doubt. But I think definitely Nathan Harrison on that dark horse element. Not as many people know about him yet. Yeah, wait till okay. he wait till he gets there because he's got a brand new fire blade. He's been plowing that thing round. I'm expecting. I think Craig Neville probably surprise a few people, and also yeah. I'm expecting speaking yeah, of super yeah. sport winners. I've uh, fully. If I if I was a gambling man, my money would be going on Lee Johnson. But win for, for super sport, yeah. Ah, uh, Hickman's gonna blitz it. Do you think if he's on that seven six five, he'll just. Do you think there'll be a... no way in my mind? Lee's definitely got. Lee do you... can do it hundred percent. Do you Lee think Hickman do... will do five? I think he'll do the lot. Do you... I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. No, I'm, like, I'm... you'll get good. By the way, if anyone is into interested in gambling, you'll get good odds on Hickman doing five. But it is very doable. That Norton. Is not being, he's not, there's been no testing on it yet, or as far as I'm aware, but he's got the infrastructure and he can pedal a bike round. Mm. There's no denying that, is it? But like, you see, you know what? I'm, and I think I've mentioned this a few times, but the fact is, Dean Harrison is on Dunlops. Yeah. On a on the Kawasaki, everything like that, but the Kawasaki, you need it. Does the Kawasaki suit the Isle of Man as well? You know, when you think about Jonathan Ray, he always pitches it into a turn, turns it, picks it up, fires it. Dean Harrison is an outstanding pilot solely because he's just riding the ears off it. And when you watch him, if you line them two up and you have to say which one wants it more, I would generally say Dean. Definitely. 100% I would say Dean, you know what I mean? But then... It's just like Hick- Hickman's so controlled, nice, calm, and I just, do. I do I, feel Hickman's got a, in terms of skill level, is uh, yeah, he is. quite a lot. I think, but yeah, I do. He's think, been doing it longer. He's been. He's I been. Do think Dean, Dean probably the, in terms of just pure grit and determination probably was would be willing to take more risks. I think yeah, I couldn't. Person. I couldn't agree more. And those Dunlops, you know, there's not going to be as much sidewall movement, mm. and he's it's going to be it's going to be tasty. And then Dunlop, if anyone's going to chuck it at the, like chuck it the chuck. Chuck everything at it. Mm-hmm. When Dunlop wants to go for it, and he's always quiet, he's always quiet. Yeah. But let's face it: when he rolls up on the grid, if he wants it, no, yeah. no one's gonna die. Uh, it's uh, we're back on the roads, Def- kids. Definitely not a, a dark horse, but I would um, just myself pers- I would absolutely love to see McGuinness have like a real grit, like brilliant TT. And I don't see there's any reason why not. Um, he's um, he's been doing well on the Ducatis. This is this last his year. last year. Has he been open about that? I've got no idea. Don't no, just ask. the way... No, no, no. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll just have to ask him. Yeah, but it's the way they're saying, oh, he's doing another... T-, like, you know, the way they're releasing it in Honda and everything like that. And John hasn't really totally talked about it, but it's the way he's like, it's his 100th TT and you're thinking, well, reading between the lines, I, I God, I hope this is not his last one. I really hope, but... Yeah, just... I might be bare, what do you call it, making mountains out of molehills on yeah. that one. But I've, I've I, not seen anything yeah. released about yeah, that. But yeah, I would, I would love... I would absolutely love... Uh, I want, who, who, uh, Imagine John winning the senior. Honestly, it would be for me that would, <laughs> it would be, be amazing. amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, you tie winter. Don, when are we getting out on the pit bikes again? Have you got any plans for getting out on the little pit bikes? Oh God, I, oh God, I. T- so Ty can go kick me ass again. You mean there you go? But it's, um, is he quick? Is he Ty? Oh God, I teeth tits and tan there. He's flying that lad. He's <laughs> he's serious. Him the CR one fifty lad, but um. No, I'm, I'm desperate to get out and do more. It's like I'm I'm just, with all the storm damage at the moment, I'm just, I'm a yes man. I just yeah. say yes to everything. I need to dial that down. And get I, need, I, I do need to get, I do. And it's You, um, you didn't answer the training one. Do you, want to, do you want to mention anything about, that's, your job's very physical, isn't it? But I need to change that attitude, you know what I mean? It's like even doing that fitness test, my fitness is there, but it's like the strength element, which is interesting. It's like my leg strength and that side of things. But I want to do more, like, 
obviously with that news, you know, like me riding my own BM, I'm not riding for the DC lads. And like I bought like their 450, like Dean lent me a 450 and I said, look, Dean, you know, I, I can see the element of it. And I had to go get a, a loan out to buy that 450 off them. But now I'm actually making a, I've made a rod from your own back. I'm actually working every weekend now to pay for that. And I've like mixing my head up. So I need to focus more on my training. I need to do more motocross and then sell the motocross. So if anyone wants to buy a, a one lady owner, never ridden ragged bike come March, let me know, please. Um, and I'll, se- I'll, I'll sell you that little 450. But I need to do more riding. You know, I need to get on the pit bike more. Mm-hmm. I, no, I, you lost loads of weight after doing some motocross, didn't you? Like yeah, some class fitness for you. That's it. Um, Shirley Bimson, any updates? And have you any new merch coming out in need of new sweatshirts? Well, we need, we definitely need to get our heads together on that and uh, come up with some uh, new merchandise. But yeah, we'll we'll say yes to that. We'll say get yes to that. We'll Aye. get something in the pipeline sometime soon. And final uh, patron question, Tony Rolls. What are your thoughts on the new FIM safety rules regarding the kit as the TT? Also, not a question, but thanks to you, both you and the other patrons, for a great day at the Flat Track School yesterday. Thanks very much for coming, Tony. And you, you've touched on it, but your thoughts, your sort of general thoughts on the new FIM rules? Yeah, I think it's... A, I'll tell you what, before I go any further and before I forget, um, get well soon to your dad, Tony, because um, he came to our patron day there and we've lost... Oh, we've lost the main camera down the middle there. Don't worry right. about that. That's the one that's out. But it's... Uh, no, Tony, um, he had to go early um, to go see his dad. He's just put in hospital. So get well soon to your dad, first of all. But no, going back to your question, it's a case of um, the FIM ruling, you know, they're talking about chest protectors, back protectors. Like I say, you know, it would be so much... <sighs> I'm not sitting in there with Paul Phillips, Gary Thompson, the insurers. No, I'm... I'm... I'm a guy sitting here in front of a mic and I can only assume they're having to make changes to show that they're making the event as safe as they can. And unfortunately, it stung the riders this time. You know what I mean? It, it'd be, it's this FIM ruling. Realistically, though, would, would there be many riders that didn't have an FIM spec helmet? Yeah. My God, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm very, very lucky that I'm, you know, I'm an RST factory rider, you know, and I'm like, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I get a suit and a helmet. Very, very lucky. But you think of the rest of the grid, you know, like I'm speaking like Forrest Dunn, you know, he's a really close friend of mine, but that, that's like 700, 700 odd quid just on the lid, never mind the airbag suit and everything. And it's like, these lads are comfortably in the top 50. You know what I mean? People who haven't got product support on that side of things, it, it's going to be difficult. But if you start whittling down all these events, you know, like the Northwest of Ulster, there's not that many road races in the world when you think about it. You know, it's actually like, it's a, it's a, na- it's a niche market who like, who want to go out and do it. Mm. And it would, it would be a, a shit event if there was only 15 lads in it, wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. It wouldn't be a spectacle in any form mm. whatsoever. So it's like that, that, that is, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's about trying to make the event as safe as you can. And, you know, they have to show that they're doing something. And that's that's how it is this year. Uh, just a little shout out uh, for, on one of the YouTube comments. It was from a good few episodes ago. But I, I always read all the comments and um, I really appreciate, you know, like all the, even if it's just saying like really enjoyed this podcast and stuff, it's like really nice to see. And But I did get pulled up on one thing and I think it was a really fair comment. And that's why I'm giving uh, give, it. Uh, doing a shout out for it but um we're talking about the tt it was what the hickman one and we're talking about minimum mage and i was saying I, I although i don't compete at the events so i'm speaking as an outsider i do think a minimum age would probably be a good thing at the tt around 25 and um someone commented saying doesn't that contradict because i'm pretty much everything else that we talk about I'm, I'm very much like a live and let live and like free choice type of person and someone said is that not a bit of a contradiction and I, it got us thinking and I thought well it is a massive contradiction to what I things but that is what I can't hide what I think I do think that but it was a it was a great comment because it's completely fair and it does massively mm. contradict most of the things I say <laughs> but uh, yeah no, no, it's perfect. <laughs> play, so it was a good comment play. good comment um, a few other quick shout outs I just wrote a few a few down that um, we needed to shout out um you mentioned earlier about uh, the hell Dave from Hell Drive. That they were ages ago, ages and, ago, they, yeah. and they are brilliant. Thank you so so much. Yeah, for, um, <laughs> for people that don't know, if you just <laughs> Sorry, uh, go on Facebook, on Instagram, type <laughs> D- Hell Drive. Dave Hell Drive is called, and yeah. a, a lovely um, helmet dries, which he sent one for me and one for Don. But he does them the same like color. They, each one's an individual. Uh, it's same color as your helmet, and uh, it looked it looked really good. Yeah. 
But uh, you mentioned a few other shout outs that was like, this is the problem you get on the show and you go, uh, one of the other shout outs. Um, I think on my side of things, uh, TT Cases, Steve Flash, he's always come through again. And the bobble hats have arrived. The, the bomb that, you know, them, the Christian Inn hats. Yeah, like, yeah. He was shouting how, about them. How do people buy them? Mate, I'll tell you what, at the moment, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to sort that. But you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'd like to do? And this is going to piss off so, so many people. But um, I want you to come up and buy one off me. You know what I mean? And like, and I know that's limited in the market and stuff like that, but I've only got like a hundred and something off them. But it's like, you know what? I want to come up. I want you to have a chat with us and just, I want to get to know you a bit more. You know what I mean? I know it like, and that's the problem. You know, if there's someone in Russia uh, you know, who, who would like one, obviously we can accommodate on that side of things. But, you know, it's a design that I'm not going to change for a long, long time. And, you know, let's, let's get you to the events, you know, and I'm always going to have a bag off them in the van and you know just come up to us and we'll have a proper chat about it uh, and the right. other, the other chat, chat about a bobble hat yeah it's a bobble hat mate yeah. you, you said you were very kindly got a message from HMY Customs who do a boot design yeah and uh, you've sent a set of you, this this year's race boots and getting a nice uh, sort of design for yeah. them so a big shout out to him Hammy uh, have you already done your design no th- th- I just said um, <laughs> like I just said just go for it he's like oh really and like uh, I just said yeah just do whatever you want and I just said well if you need any reference I like the color tr- um look I like the color green I like trees and I like big tits so I just said anything on that design exactly. front yeah yeah I did yeah so like, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up with these boots it'll That's be good it. crack so no big thanks to him massive looking forward to seeing <laughs> really looking forward to seeing the yeah, product yeah, on that side of things yeah well uh, it's been really nice uh, just to do a podcast with um just us two and if anyone is still watching or listening, thanks very much for for doing the full show. Um, we, we, now and again, <laughs> shocking your voice, like yeah, it's a, it's yeah a, we, we just rambled on. Now, now and again, uh, <laughs> we do a little sort of shout outs for things, but um, we do really appreciate anyone that leaves comments, shares, likes, shares, and also if you go if wherever you listen to the podcast, whether it be like Google or Apple Podcasts, whatever, if it is possible to leave a review, really five star, a, a five star reviews, we really appreciate <laughs> that as well. And um, but yeah, without. Um, without rambling on too much longer massive thank you to our sponsors Colchester Kawasaki and to all of our patrons uh, we'll have to get a, some sort of Zoom whatever uh, some sort the of quiz yeah, soon, yeah yeah definitely I and um, yeah have you got anything else to wrap things up um, no I think come February you know it's um, head down arse up and it like you say we've got a couple of cracking episodes coming up like really really high entertaining ones which everyone's going to enjoy and we're going to have to Eventually get back on the road again, Chrissy, and get this all done. Yeah, them, but, um, them next two, without uh, spoiling it for you, the next two guests were definitely two of my favourite ones that we've done recently. Really, yeah. really good. Uh, so, so, yeah, enjoy them. But but the good the good thing side of it is, like, you know, I know I'm going back on what we were previously saying, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm looking for some, like, financial packages. I'm very lucky that I'm, I'm doing... All I literally need to get is... Uh, like, an awning. That's the only thing I need to get my hands on, you know, just a pop-up awning. But, like... Um, any sponsor want to come on board for the roads element, please get in touch with me. But seriously, for you, Chrissy, you know, just uh, any, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flood your inbox for you, because if anyone thinks they can help you out in any small matter of way, please get in touch with Chrissy. You know, like you know, tire racks, warmers, you know, sponsor a pack of tire warmers, or you know, sponsor a, a set of brake pads, or anything on that side of things. Just flood Chrissy's inbox. You know what I mean? God, God love Grace, because uh, she's she's in charge of a social media element and she's doing an awesome job of it. So the her phone will be going ping, 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 ping. <laughs> Ping, God love her. But um, no, like you say, Chrissy, thank you so much to all our patrons. Call Chest Kawasaki in there. Uh... Hi. Roll on, next go- podcast. roll on next podcast, son. Excellent. Thanks very much. Take Cheers, care. Mate. See ya. <laughs> Click, buy, deliver with remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.